So hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, bringing you an extra bonus episode of Postcards from China. Yes, we have made it to episode 10. Now, what I'm going to do here is try something a little bit different. So, obviously we've done one episode before focusing on one particular tournament or a game within a particular tournament. What I'm going to try and do today, just to speed things up, is I'm going to bring you more than one game from more than one tournament. As I mentioned in the previous episode, we've got the East Asian Championship, we've got our return to the Bangabandu Cup, we've got the China Cup, we've got World Cup qualification. So potentially four key matches taking place over the next few months. I'm going to bring you all of them together in this one episode. Let's get started and find out what's up first. So yes, it's the East Asian Championship first, but before we get into results so far, just a reminder that this is your one-stop shop for all things international management on FM21. If international management is your thing, then please go ahead, hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, get the bell on for notifications so you don't miss any of the international action. So yeah, I mentioned last time that the East Asian Championships was going to be held at the end of 2023 and it was going to be a bit different this time because of course last time Japan finished fourth then they were not able to get through the qualification round this time Hong Kong beat them to that so it's slightly easier competition this time so I played this game and I just thought I'll bring you I'll bring you a match on the channel if we have a chance of winning and well as you can tell we do. So first match up in the competition was North Korea. Now we took a lead in the first half. They equalized early in the second half, but we were able to bounce back immediately. Gu Tian Yu getting two goals. And as you can see from the stats up here, we dominated that game. We probably should have won by a greater margin than 3-1, but good to properly get revenge on North Korea for the last East Asian Championship. But then the big one in our second game, we took on South Korea, and what a game this was. Very tight first half, then early in the second half, Tian Yu gave us the lead, and we held on to that lead. South Korea started to come at us, but I thought we, you know, I thought we'd thrown it away. They equalized with three minutes left, but then, you know, we thought, well, okay, we're, we're both going to go into that final game with four points. But then Wang Shikuan, who I'd just brought on as a substitute, like he'd only been on the pitch for four or five minutes, popped up in injury time to score with the last kick of the game, give us a 2-1 victory over Korea. So that means coming into today's final game against Hong Kong, the weakest team in the competition, we are top of the group. Three points clear of the two Koreas who play each other. So the only way we don't win this championship is if we lose and one of them wins by a sufficient margin to overtake us. So anyway, we're going to get straight into it. We're playing our usual 4-2-3-1. We've got Tian Yu playing up front. He's just having a great tournament. So Elkison, we've kind of dropped back into this attacking midfield role. Now he's getting a bit older. He can't lead the line so well. We've got our youngsters here, Fan Lei, Ku Yu, Zimbo. They're all in the team. We've got to beat Hong Kong, guys. Come on. I don't think I mentioned this is actually taking place in China, so we've got home advantage as well. Pretty quiet start to the game, but hopefully we'll start the goal scoring soon. Okay, here we go. We get the cross in. Tian Yu with a wild header. It comes back out to Yong Yong. We have the shot, but it's blocked. We've still got a chance to do something with this, though. Let's have a look. Yong Yong with the ball out wide now plays it back to Jun Yi. Come on, let's get it into the centre. Let's get the cross in then. Okay, we're, we're playing a bit cautiously for my liking. Maybe I should go up to our more positive-minded tactic. But okay, Elkerson switches it out. Yim Ying with the cross. Elkerson with the shot. Just fizzes wide. Past the half-hour mark now. We have been dominating. We haven't let Hong Kong even have a sniff on goal yet. But we haven't been able to score ourselves. Oh, and here come Hong Kong looking to mount an attack for the first time. 
They've still got the ball, though. They've still got the chance. Fernandinho's clearance was a bit rash. He should have taken his time with that. But this would be typical if Hong Kong score now, having done nothing all half. Right, can we get an equaliser before half time? Yes, we can. Yiming. Yiming with the header there. Oh, okay. Hong Kong's lead didn't last very long. Of course, a point is good enough for us, but I've just switched things up a little bit at half time. We've gone into positive, made things a couple of positions a bit more attacking as we look to get that second goal, which will send us on our way. Well, it's been pretty much a non-event of a second half as we move into the final 10 minutes. I mean, a point is fine for us. It will guarantee us that first place and the title. But, you know, obviously a win and a perfect nine points would be even better. But it looks like we're going to have to settle for a laboured draw against Hong Kong. Indeed, there it is. And here we go. The China boys coming up to collect the East Asian Cup. So now we've won the China Cup, we've won the King's Cup, we've won the Bangabandu Cup, and now the East Asian Cup, our fourth trophy with this Chinese team. And there we go, it's lifted aloft. China celebrate. On to the next one. So did I say potentially four crucial games in today's episode? So potentially four key matches taking place. Hmm... I thought so. Well, it seems I may have jumped the gun a little bit on that one. So within weeks of winning the East Asian Championship, we were back in tournament action, defending our crown at the Bangabandu Cup. Now we breezed through the early matches, Central African Republic, Seychelles. They were no match for the might of the Chinese machine. The other best team in the competition, though, was definitely Saudi Arabia, and that's who we would face in the final. And as you can see here we would ultimately lose that game. It was fairly even, it has to be said, but I think just having had three really easy matches up to that point left us a bit soft, and they got the win. And then we had the China Cup. Now, I get with these tournaments that the FAs that organise them want to bring some of the biggest and best teams from around the world, and this occasion, they invited Argentina, but then... Why did they draw us against Argentina in the semi-final? Surely they should have arranged the draw so that we could have played them in the final. But it was, uh, yes, Argentina who we faced in the first game. As you can see here, it did not go well for us. Our young team were on the receiving end of quite a hiding. Um, I mean, we there was a glimmer of hope when we equalised at 1-1. We were playing well up until about the 40th minute. This uh, Martinez, who got four goals, all of them, as I recall, were tap-ins from rebounds. Some from his own shots, some from other people's shots, but yeah, they were just way too good for us. We would, however, save a little bit of face with a 3-1 win over Bulgaria in the third place match. Big news on a couple of our youngsters before we get into the final game of today's episode. Jeng K has transferred to Feyenoord. So um, he's playing now in a big league in Europe. And as you can see here, he's doing pretty well. Seven starts and an average rating of 7.74. Also in Holland, having moved at the end of his contract, Fan Lee, 19 years old, and he's now at RZ Alkmaar. Now he's only been there since January, but five goals and an assist so far. So interesting days ahead for some of our young players. Okay, but we're here for our final crunch game in World Cup qualifying second round. So I'm just going to talk you through the results so far. Now, we said back in the previous episode when the draw came up that Brunei, Vietnam, Afghanistan wouldn't present much of a challenge, and that has been the case. We've won all of our games against them with ease, but you'll see the red circle there. When we travelled to Uzbekistan, yeah, we lost 2-1. We... We started well. Jen K gave us the lead early on. We conceded a penalty. It looked like it was going to be a 1 1 draw, but then Jun Yi scored an own goal. Now, back in March, we won two games back to back Vietnam and Afghanistan, but Uzbekistan have just kept on winning as well. Now, with it being an odd number of teams in the group, we've played one more than Uzbekistan at this point, but you see, they've won every match. They're on six 
wins 18 points. We're on 1-6, lost 1. Goal difference is the first factor used to separate teams. So we have the advantage on that score at the moment. So what's going to happen now? We are going to play our home game with Uzbekistan. So we'll be looking for a win. For the goal difference, we've got to be looking to win you know, by a couple of goals at least, I think. And then we have to sit and wait as in four days' time. The final games are played. Uzbekistan are home to Afghanistan, bottom of the group. So, you know, it could be that we get the win today, but let's say we win one or two nil, and then Uzbekistan go and stick seven past Afghanistan, and then we get eliminated. So it's going to be a tough one. All right, so this is our lineup for this big game where we've got to win familiar formation. We've got our Dutch boys, Jenke and Fan Lee, in that attacking midfield role. We'll be looking for Tan Yu to be getting the goals as he's done for us recently. And unfortunately, Jun Yi, scorer of that own goal last time, broke his ankle days before the game, so he's out. Right, so the team's come out for this crucial game. Oh, it's going to be a tense one. I've done a few, uh, by the way, noticed my new shirt. This one, uh, courtesy of FM Trek. I was uh, entered into his Patreon monthly draw for March and was the lucky winner. So he sends the winner a mystery shirt. So he, knowing my taste for international shirts, sent me the Zimbabwe away one. As, oh, Tin Yao, that's what we put him in the team for. He's hit the post. I mean, we didn't put him in the team to hit the post, but to create those kind of chances and get into those positions. Yuning heads it over. Oh, two good chances already. Okay, throw in now. We've got 11 minutes on the clock. A goal now would be... Would be nice. Jenk, Kate, Peng. The youngsters linking up. Yuning, Yuning gets a second chance. Ah, oh, his first shot was blocked. Second shot's wide. Oh, this is dramatic stuff. Don't forget that failure to win today means our World Cup dream is over. Even just, uh, you know, a, a narrow win might not be enough depending on what happens in the next game. So we've really got to go for it. And even if we do not uh, qualify for the World Cup, that's not going to be the end of the series just yet because I completely forgot until I received the news item. There is one more competition that we are going to play in. As winners of the East Asian Championship, we're going to play in the East Asian, Southeast Asian Champions Trophy as we get the gold. Jiang Yuning, yes, puts us 1-0 up. That's what we needed just before half time. Get in. But yeah, that's a competition that has been scheduled in real life, though. It hasn't taken place yet due to a certain virus. But the winners of the East Asian Championship against the winners of the Southeast Asian Championship in a kind of Super Cup game. I think I said Southeast Asian, then instead of Southeast Asian. But we will have qualified for that. That's going to take place in 2025. It will be on the channel. All right, straight back out there then. We were the better team by far in that first half. But we, you know, we need to capitalise on this superiority we need to bag a couple more goals okay a couple of substitutions then we've brought on QEUE and Fernandinho to give us some fresh legs in midfield right final substitution made Su Ming Tian another youngster has come up from one of the youth teams coming on for Fan Lei who's been a bit ineffective today oh we've got a highlight here is it going to be another late goal in this game Jiang Kei gets it Jiang Kei makes it 2 no, with five minutes to go. Still might not be enough. So there's still time to push for a third. All right, so we've gone more positive. I told them to shoot on site, pump balls forward. Let's see if we can get something in this final four minutes. Ooh, it's Uzbekistan, though. We, oh, we wouldn't want them to score now. Oh, dear. That wouldn't be good at all. Ooh, they just head over their first real chance of the game. Ugh, is 2-0 going to be enough? Is it going to finish 2-0 even? The highlight continues. There's just over 20 seconds of normal time left. Uzbekistan are coming at us. I think they know that this goal difference could be crucial as well. Oh, have we gone too attacking? Maybe not. Su Ming Tian. Su Ming Tian on the run. He plays in Tian Yu. Tian Yu, come on. Tian Yu, can he get the cross off? Can he get the shot in? No, he gets hacked down. It finishes 2-0. Is that going to be enough? Right, so we've come up to the day of the final set of fixtures in this second round stage. And as you can see, we're three points ahead of Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan have that game against Afghanistan to play. The goal difference, we're on plus 21, they're on plus 14. So they would need an 8-0 win to overtake us. 
As you can see here, 7-0 would put them on the exact same record, exact same points, exact same goals for and goals against. However, because we lost 2-1 in Uzbekistan, but 1-2-0 in China, that would give us the advantage. So 8-0. It's not inconceivable for Uzbekistan to beat Afghanistan 8-0, but it's going to be a tense click of the continue button. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Only a 6-1 win for Uzbekistan. But, well, if you look at how the goals went in, it did look a bit worrying for a while there. 18, 21 minutes, 29, 33. So they were 4-0 up halfway there at halftime. Then 5-0, they made it on 49. But Afghan, well, 5-1, sorry, Afghanistan had scored earlier in that half. But then I think... They saw 9-1 is going to be a bit too much of an ask, and we have made it. So let's have a look. So there you go, confirmation we've qualified for the final stage. And now the draw for the final stage, which also includes Uzbekistan. Wait a minute. was Did I just build up all that drama and tension for nothing? Okay, so Uzbekistan qualified with us, but... I look at the rules, I swear the rules for the second round said, yep, that the first place team qualifies for the final stage. Ah, okay, I missed this little detail at the bottom. Top team qualifies for final stage. Best four teams in second position qualify for final stage. Read the rules, mate. All right, so this is our group. So there's some tough opposition in here. I mean, um, Iran, South Korea, obviously we've played them a couple of times. But we know we can beat Uzbekistan. We know we can beat UAE. I think we can beat Qatar. Top four go through. So World Cup 2026. I'm I'm feeling a lot more confident about it now. And just to double check the rules, it is indeed top four in the group going through to the World Cup. Fifth, fifth even get into a playoff. So we'd have to completely bottle it to not progress. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play through a load of these World Cup qualifiers. Hopefully, then, we're going to get into the top four. Now, around March time, we are going to be drawn in this competition I mentioned during the commentary, the kind of Super Cup Champions Trophy with East Asian Champions and Southeast Asian Champions. So I'm going to bring you back next episode. We will feature this match, and I'll give you an update on the World Cup qualifying. Who knows? Maybe we might have already qualified by then. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the episode. Please hit that like button if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Get the bell on for notifications. I'm Dodgy Gamer, and I'll see you again soon.